So, hello everyone. I am uh, Shavanti. I'm an architect and designer and having been working in this field for quite some time now, what I've come to realize is that we as individuals and as a country developing right now are in such a hurry to expand, to create our future that we are filling our spaces, our entire cities and world with such buildings that we are not sure where we are leading, finally. I'll start my presentation showing you a picture of Dubai in 1990, which is not very far ago, you know. You can see a, a main highway on which this is the tallest building. And very vast landscapes of empty areas, some natural uh, vegetation that is going on and the back. And this is a picture of it in 2003. You can see the difference. The tallest building then has become the smallest one now. The skyline has changed entirely. The traffic has increased and it's a small word, increase here. But still there is a systematic growth and development. You can see some settlement changes, some linearity, some uh, logic behind this development. I'll take you to a picture of Connaught Place when it was first designed, the Newton's Delhi. Uh, the center past is the Connaught, Connaught Place area and there is a large spaces empty for future development. This is another place, a uh, photograph of Connaught Place when, uh, where there is easy movement of traffic, people are able to enjoy their space. And this is a photograph right now in 2012. So, uh, looking at this place right now, what we can see is uh, there was a future plan for uh, Connaught Place, but uh, with problems of parking, of development, which were not catered while uh, such haphazard development was taking place, uh, such personal traffic jams and such uh, irrational uh, set of cities are cropping up which we are not really able to handle. I'll take you, uh, I'll go back to the uh, point where I started uh, being fascinated by space and architecture. I'll tell you a story when uh, I was in school, there was a very beautiful play Gandhi organized. And uh, I happened to be part of the people who were organizing it, were making the sets and props for the whole uh, uh, play that was to be happening. So the, um, I was uh, on the other side of the uh, scene experiencing it when the whole play was being organized that there was a main stage and uh, the main acts were taking place in it and uh, there was a big fire that was lit on one side and the troops came marching between the audience and the, the way the whole setup transformed the space was, uh, was so beautiful and uh, it made me realize how we can really transform our spaces, how architecture, how space can change the way we are interacting with our world. Uh, in real life also, I feel that architecture is more of a theatrical place that it offers to the citizen. How a public space becomes a theater or a stage on which people come and interact and talk. How every facade becomes a background up in front of which people are performing. Uh, so, um, while designing, I have always thought, what are the main problems that are, you know, uh, why, when a space can do so much, transform and create such, such, uh, such beautiful areas, so why are we not able to uh, counter the problems that are there right now? Suppose there's a hospital that has come up, it, uh, we always say that, uh, a, a step forward, you know, um, we, we are making hospital and we are taking a step forward, but whenever uh, there's a new building that has come up, because of the traffic congestions, we are going two steps back at the same time. So whenever I'm designing, I always focus on how my uh, particular building or my space interacts with the environment outside. This is a proposal for National School of Drama in uh, New Delhi which was supposed to be at the main nodal Mandi, Mandi house uh, area. 
So initially there was just one entrance for uh, uh, this particular piece of land and while designing a proposal for making it into a bigger institution, what I really thought was to divide the whole uh, people who will be visiting, visiting this place into three segments. The pedestrian, uh, the people who will be visiting the institution and the people who will be visiting it when there was uh, a, some performance or some theatre activities that were going on. So I uh, placed the entrances in such a way that the pedestrian would be closer to the metro stations and uh, the traffic movement um, which would cater to the entry of the other areas would be in flow of the traffic that was already existing. So this way without hampering really the outside area uh, by just certain ways of putting things together we can solve very big problems and uh, take, uh, really make use of the thinking process of the designer in, in great problem solving. Uh, recently, I am working in uh, refineries and petrochemical se uh, sectors and uh, these area, uh, these are very hazardous and dangerous refineries and uh, we have a central control room that always comes in between. This building is the main area where all the uh, activities of the coal refinery is controlled and um, people are only uh, using this building. So these buildings are always uh, designed to cater to the safety of people and uh, impacting the, you know, how, if, if whenever there is a blast, so how this building can become a bunker to people who are there in the refinery and save their lives. Apart from the major uh, structural considerations that we uh, keep always in designing, you just imagine, suppose there is a fire in this room right now. Will we be able to escape it as fast as you think the fire can start from here and reach that door? But we, we, didn't need it, we, we needn't worry right now because when this building, building was designed, the architects take into consideration everything. How much the door width should be, how much the corridor should be. So an architectural designer is not designing only for a good aesthetic appeal or how the building would function in the best ways but what we are really doing is we are designing it in the worst conditions uh, predicting all the natural calamities that could happen and that could uh, ha uh, that could take our lives um, one another uh, role of architect I, would, I have come across in my experience while doing various projects was uh, the individualization and how people are really connected to the cities and the places they are in. Even if we are, uh, for a day if we are in a city, we somehow have these images in our mind, we connect to them emotionally, we have some kind of, kind of conversation that goes on within us and the cities. So whenever there is an activity like a big development that is taking place, the surprising thing is that people uh, revolt. Uh, like when uh, uh, looking at Jaipur city, which is a very beautiful city, um, there was a need of a new traffic system that was to be introduced, uh, that was Jaipur Metro, looking in the condition of present traffic jams right now in the city. So uh, what... Um, came as a design solution uh, was construction of Jaipur Metro but it was uh, given such bad, uh, it had such bad reviews from the people of the city. Nobody liked such thing entering in a place. So um, where in a place there was supposed to be a cultural hybrid, there was a cultural conflict that was being created and where I thought, we, I came in as an uh, designer was presenting to people a design which they would like and be connected with. So this was one metro station that was supposed to be taken in the Wall City area. What I imagined was that I took this uh, main uh, uh, central road as the dynamic movement of people and took the two nodal points as the uh, entry points to the running stream below. So what became those two points was kind of like the steppers that are here in this region and uh, when people are entering these spaces they could connect they could just enter and see that they are entering into a step well and a view of it would uh, came up something like this so 
this design when uh, when was displayed uh, in the exhibitions people were really liking it and what i came to realize is that uh, whenever we are designing when an, uh, a designer is approached for some design solution there's a very uh, much uh, need of creating a connect between the designer and the client who's uh, who's in end, uh, he's the who's the end user um, also exploring various uh, forms of design and how people are living around the city and around places i uh, happened to come across this place this uh, this is called a jugad and uh, uh, what happens is um, i happened to come this is not very far from the place we are talking right now it's just 20 25 kilometers away there's a person who lives here he has a family he works daily on some wages if it doesn't work out he takes his home and travels somewhere else a lot like the fancy caravans that we imagine our lives would be and uh, his home is quite self sufficient he has a kitchen he has water supply and you know he has and he had a suitcase and he was very happy that he could lock his possessions so uh, but is it the kind of home that uh, that people can be you know uh, Sat can be satisfied with. Uh, this is another house. It is a house that we, uh, that uh, houses twenty people. There are uh, uh, all these units. Each uh, are belong to one family each. And uh, this is the real condition of people living right now. Uh, when I visited, I'll say that uh, to be honest, there was sanitation. It was properly made. It was hygienic. But uh, is it the end? Is it uh, the last solution that we have? So uh, what I realized was uh, in a similar house like this, these were all the children who were living in one space. And if we are giving such spaces to our uh, future generation and kids, then uh, what kind of uh, future are we trying to create? When, uh, when we all, all the time talk about cyberspace and uh, emotional spaces and the growth, uh, a space where a kid does not even have a time to think and uh, what kind of individuals are we planning to really bring up from our country? So um, in the end, what I uh, came up as my uh, interpretation of my work and my responsibility as an architect was I found that there is uh, a user and there is an environment and there is an in-between layer and that layer is what we spatial designers or architect design in such a way that we are able to provide maximum to the user without harming the context of the environment they are living in. And hopefully our uh, journey and explorations in design would help a better future. Thank you.